In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, St. Teresa, pray for us. St. Lorenzo, Ruiz, and companions, pray for us. Very interesting saints who died very brutal deaths, and it can seem so impossible. How were they able to do that? Wow, without apostatizing. And it seems amazing, but I hope they were given a million graces to get through it because it seems so crazy. We have your blessed rose petal, St. Michael's World Apostolate, your rosary of the unborn, and definitely our holy face with the promises on the back. And it is a Sunday. Don't forget the promises and the rosary promises. But it is Sunday. Have you been to confession, an honest confession? Have you been uh, good with the Ten Commandments in, in my Holy Eucharist reception today? I saw the Ten Commandments as being so important. And remember, it's important to take communion kneeling and on the tongue. That's the only way you want to do it. You want to cover your head. You don't have to wear a scarf. You can wear a hat. If you're a woman, it's okay. But uh, you have to cover your head in some way or another when you go into the church. And no women on the altar. It's just bad news. Don't wear pants. you got to wear a skirt. But a confession is so important right now. I can't tell you. To go every single week and make it an honest one. Don't make it a fake one. We have to live our lives, Catholic. You can't just go off in the world. You can't wear two suits. You can't wear two coats. This is it. This is life. It's simple. It's simple living. But a lot of people don't want that simple living. I saw my Holy Communion how God wants me walking. He doesn't want me driving around. And it's it's kind of like, well, why? I mean, other people are driving to doing holy things with their cars, like driving to church and other things. But God has his ways. And remember, this is like the wound in the hand, right? And we have to walk through the wounds uh, to get to heaven. And he wants people to actually be walking as our Lord walked. And I'm not saying I'm worthy of that or even I'm not worthy of it. And you can do it too if you want. I know there's another priest. He's actually coming out of the cathedral tonight to give a talk. The Holy Face. I, I forget his name. Uh, but he'll be there tonight giving a talk. But he walked around for years evangelizing on the streets. I don't necessarily evangelize directly, but maybe indirectly. Hopefully somebody sees my little way. And maybe it helps comfort them if they're stuck in a sports car and they don't like their life. And they see someone just walking. It could certainly help. Just like Garth. Garth's witness helped us all when we saw him on his feeding tube and his, his uh, you know, lung thing. We all... Um, we all have a certain appreciation for life by seeing how he perseveres through his life that we wouldn't normally have by seeing his witness. And his witness is very humble and delicate and pure and childlike. It's very holy, right? He's just willing to accept God's will. And we saw, I saw this, this thread of beauty coming down from the cross going to the priest. And the priest is a tall priest, but he saw him was like a little child like a little boy and our Lord loves him and I saw how our Lord loved and raised him up from his, his little child knowing he would become a priest oh it's so beautiful I love it he loves us just like we're little kids still he just loves us every minute oh thank you our Lord for that witness I don't know if these priests even know they see our Lord's hand in their life and all the graces when they're on the altar flowing down and just love oh if they knew they'd never want to leave the altar They'd want to stay there forever because the love is so great. And it's great for us, too. I have to say, after Holy Communion, I feel like the, the whole church is snowing or raining teardrops from heaven. It's snowing. It's raining. All these graces down on us. Delicate little mana from heaven. I feel it on us. And a lot of people just walk out the door. They were clouded for their communion in the hand. And their irreverences and their immodest dress and their talking. God blinds them to his grace. We have to take the veil off of our eyes, as St. Paul says, and really see. Clearly, to do that, my guardian angel says you have to have the golden th thimbles, right? The golden thimbles of prayer like this with your fingers up and the golden kneecaps on your knees. I read or I was hearing in communion we need, I need more time on my knees I need more time in prayer constant prayer 
in my holy communion I saw a darkness. I saw that beautiful rain, that beautiful cascade waterfall. It was kind of came into a book. It was like the gospel, and the book started spinning off and turned all black. There's just nothing. It's all black. And for me, that kind of reminds of the scriptures being fulfilled. The book of Revelations, we're going to have the three days darkness. And Father Blount said we're going to have the blackout where there could be something that takes off our electricity or whatever. And we're going to be in a blackout. But there's also going to be a spiritual blackout where the, there's going to be the churches will be closed again just like they were a couple of years ago. But this time there will be no internet. So it, there's going to be like a double blackout. And Father Blount said he saw it three times. There's our Blessed Mother showing to him this blackout to to show that it is a warning for us. And we know a lot of people have slowly realized like what's going on in the world. We need more prayer. Father uh, Ripperger has made a beautiful prayer. I love it. It's very beautiful. And I post it below. If I can do that, I'll do it again. Maybe do be prayed every day for this upcoming election, which is very critical to the freedoms of our, not just of our country, but the entire world, if you think about it, because the U.S. is a light to the world. And that's why it's called the eagle. And uh, it's been that way, and it was designed by God that way. And it's definitely in Scripture when you see the eagle in Scripture and, and all of its... Uh, what God intend for our country and what we've become, you know, uh, God can can punish us for being bad, you know, sins of abortion, all this, to have our freedoms taken away by by evil leaders, and that's what it says in Scripture. If you sin against the Lord, He will place a dictator over you. I think it says that in Old Testament. We see it happening in the tribes of Israel so many times. They fell away. From the, from the one true God, they started worshiping false gods, and pretty soon they were enslaved. They had their kids taken away. They had all sorts of terrible things happen to them. And we can see in our families, there's a, there's a huge divide in crevasses of, of evil going on. I, and they're in the holy face, too, the crevasses. But our Lord will come and heal. I saw these are like the two continental divided plates separating by this... Um, this crevasse or this this ball of chastisement is going to separate the plates and the earth's going to start moving and being very very unstable and i saw it here too these plates are going to start moving and and it's going to i saw one down here i can't really I'm, i need to look at my notes because i write this stuff down and then i i i need to remember what i was what i was writing about Oh, that was another thing. I saw the covenant of the tabernacle. I saw this as the covenant of the tabernacle. Or like the Ark of the Covenant. And it was beautiful. It has this whole design of the Ark of the Covenant. It's very beautiful. But it's in, in the tabernacle where our Lord rests, right? His blessed sacrament. So important. I saw it and it's glowing. It has the huge cross over it. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so beautiful. I also saw on our Blessed Mother's our Lady Guadalupe, the compass on her knee, they were out of time. We're basically out of time. It's either pray or pray and get to Mass, confession, all these things as much as you can. It's We're at critical Mass, literally and definitely, in terms of the state of our world. We know it. All you have to do is, is and I don't recommend doing this, but if you read, read you know, some events going on, and you can see all the murders and, and what's going on in, in our country. The hit and runs happen almost every week. Or, and, and these people perish and, and the, the driver just drives away. I mean, this is stuff that was unheard of just a little while ago. And now it's happening almost every week. On sometimes almost every day. There's a lot of police and cops getting attacked. And this stuff is really... They, they really do put their lives out on the line every single day, especially right now. We have to pray for them because they don't know what they're going to get when they open that car door anymore. And a lot of it is drug confiscations and these people aren't in the right head. So you have to pray for our cops. They need St. Michael, you know, St. Michael's Royal Postulate. They have that, that, uh. St. Michael, blessed metal shield. You have to have it blessed by a priest. But they're really pricey. They're like 70 bucks because they're made out of silver. 
I wish they had cheaper ones. I probably want to want to suggest that for for cops, but since they're so pricey, you know, they'd have to really consider. But maybe they can take it into their heart because St. Michael's shield is what the cops need, and their armor and the sword of St. Michael. And you can have all these things by reading the St. Lorena or the the Lorena prayers. She has prayers in her in her prophecies that relate to um there's a prayer to obtain the uh hold on I just need to plug my computer in Okay, my computer was going to die there, so I just had to plug it in. It's kind of difficult because this, uh, okay, I'm just having to stretch the cord out and I'm not going to untangle it right now, but anyway, so this Lorena, Lorena prayers, And there's ones against uh, bloodline curses, too, that you want to do. And restoration of family. Now, I've been praying that one for my parents. They need to come into prayer still. I get a sense my family's not really praying. They just kind of gossip, but they don't really put people down, make fun of them and stuff. They don't really pray, and they're very materialistic. They don't really pray for people, and, and they don't pray for restoration, you know. So they're... It's a family divided, right? If a house divided against itself will, will fall. But ultimately, our love is for God first. We can't, you know, it's sad when people don't want to come to God, but we can't let it get us down. We can't let it destroy our heart and soul with our love of God. We just have to trust that if God wants to convert them, He'll send them the graces when it's time. But there's the... Don't, don't stop praying for them. So you ought to trust that God, God's in control of it, and He will judge them, and He can send them to hell. You know. So ultimately, you know, we just have to have to trust. And um, I'm just looking at where the Shield of Saint Michael prayer is. I have so many. There's the Fiat's for the warning. I highly recommend these prayers. Prayer of the Sword of Saint Michael. Prayer the of the shield of St. Michael and prayer of the armor of St. Michael the Archangel. These are all in here. I kind of printed them out. It's probably hard to see. But you can go on Lorena. And my link is always down on those. On the um, page down there. Message from St. Michael the Archangel to Lorena. August 24th, 2022. That's the message with all the St. Michael prayers. And I highly recommend all the cops say their prayer every day. And make your home a refuge because cops will be attacked in these last times. That's just how I feel because they, there's literally no no respect for authority. And there's no no respect for parents. Just like St. Michael's little postulate said, all those prophecies are coming true. I see it every day in these state schools. These parents have really expensive cars and they could care less what their kids learning. And these kids are so, they're so godless and... And they really are, it's like a foreign people to me. They really, um, they're really kind of filled with hate. And, and they don't know God. And they're going to express that through violence. Violent means, and I see a lot of graffiti around. I see a lot of ill, just, you know, kids just walking around. Because now there's no school on Friday. So they're just walking around for three days, just lost. Because their parents don't want anything to do with them. And we ought to pray. Because our country will be will be destroyed by our enemies, not not because I want that, but it's because uh, God is a just God, and he does punish people for being bad. That's just how it works. And, uh, you know, we got to pray, pray very, very hard. But anyway, I just wanted to go through now. Now i got to make sure, let's see, where is I stopping at? I saw the Bible on a pedestal in the holy face with an arrow pointing down to the Bible. The word made flesh. Yeah. So I saw this is like a pedestal here. 
and with the Bible, and then that his nose becomes like an arrow pointing down the Word made flesh. So important, the Word. The Word, we're going to have to rely so much on the Word, especially when the sacraments are taken away. And this synod, you know, they could change the words of the consecration, try to force priests uh, into hiding and, and things like that, like by the Vatican, because it's ultimately kind of an inside job. Be with the with the Freemasons in the Vatican. I wouldn't say it's an inside job really because Freemasons coming to the church is against the church. The church cannot be ever be against itself. But I, what I mean is they kind of wiggled or weaseled their way in. So anyway, that's been going on for over a hundred years. Just talk to Pope Leo the Thirteenth and listen to what is said about Saint Michael the Archangel and Pope Paul the Sixth who said the smoke of Satan has entered into the church. We know this is true because also the, the third secret is that Antichrist would enter into mitres in 1973. That's all Jacinta with uh, based on prophecies. You can look that up. The body of Christ is complete mystery. I see the body of Christ and it's so prevalent to me and it really is a body and we really become part of the body and that's such a complete mystery. It's not just a figure, man. It's not just a symbol. We really become part of the living body of Christ and it blew me, my mind. Especially in the reception of the Holy Communion, we really take him in and it's a communion. And it's a beautiful thing. We really come and unite ourselves with the body of Christ. Wow, I love it. So wonderful. We can meditate on that. And uh, the Holy Face, he looks old to me. And like the old father, like the like eternal father, thy will be done. The passion is fulfilled and he did God's will. Yeah, he just looked so old to me. One day when I was looking at him, he didn't look young anymore. He looked like God the father. Because he did the will of the Father, so he reflects the face of God the Father. And he does also in appearance, too, because his son looks like the Father in appearance, many of them. But he, he yeah, I mean, you know, through inheritance of ge genetics and thing, DNA. But, but he also just looks like the Father when he did the Father's will. Isn't that beautiful? His face shines like the Father. Remember, when you honor the Son, you honor the Father as well. That's what said. he said in Mass, we honor the Son, we honor the Father. So you get the shining, the shining holy face and the shining, you know, our hearts and the shining holy face of the Father and the Holy Ghost too. You get all three if you honor just, if you honor just one, the holy face of our Lord. That's how it works because he's God. He's part of the Trinity, right? I saw my suffering pressed pressed and crushed and this is one thing I saw in Holy Communion today I saw all the wounds of all this persecution coming from within my house mostly with with uh, and outside my house mostly with relatives and I know you probably have relatives too that have fallen away from the faith and I tell you <laughs> you know people spend their whole life wondering prayer and fasting those are the two things that can help prayer and fasting and of course we have to try to convert them they won't listen and I have to try to reconvert people almost every day in my life because they're just so worldly and the vices are so, they're just continually drawing them out. It almost makes me like just how is this possible? How can I persevere in this? It's just like, you know, the same thing over and over again. But it's because people are so attached to the world. They're so attached to being their so and so rights and freedoms of not being married, of not having kids, and that they'll they'll just reject them. And you have to keep trying to pull them back, and it's uh, it can be extremely painful. But remember, Blessed Mother cried tears of blood, so we know why. And she has tears every time it rains; it's her tears because she's constantly calling her children back. And I, I saw that our Lord for a long time was knocking on my heart. I saw it's my Holy Communion. He was knocking on my heart. But first of all, I was saying all the suffering I had for conversion of relatives and marriage and. And, you know, other things, relatives, parents, after all this going on in my life, I saw my wounds totally in other things reflect the, the perfectly reflect the wounds of the wounds of the cross. And, and it's so wonderful. Oh, I love it. He really, and it, they turn into solid gold. They glow and shine. He wants our body to be completely chastised like his. He loves it. He loves us to look like him and be the mirror image of him. He likes this. 
The world doesn't, but he likes it, so that's great. Wow, thank you, our Lord. I didn't know my suffering really did anything. I thought it was just so people could make fun of me. I mean, that's just kind of how, how we feel in a worldly way, right? We don't feel like it really does anything because we don't really see any results until we actually just pray and realize the prayer is the result. Amen, right? God wants us on our knees in prayer. He does things because he wants more prayers, and so be it. Amen. Thy will be done, Lord. And it, and the, the the wounds were so beautiful. I love them. I said, wow, he's really trying to make of me a, a cross and a crucifixion. The cross can be very heavy, you know. But anyway, what I was saying, our Lord, is for a long time he was knocking on my heart. He was knocking on the door, and I wouldn't let him in. I was like, he was trying to woo me. He loved me. He wanted to marry me, but I just closed the door. Mm -hmm. And he made him cry. It made him so sad. He's trying to marry me. He's trying to knock on the door, see if I are you home. And then, no. But then I opened the door, and he was so happy when I opened the door. He was happier than if I had just opened the door right away. Isn't that crazy? Because we should open the door sooner than later. Don't get me wrong. Don't wait and put this off. But he was just so overjoyed. He took me into his arms and brought me to heaven. Oh, I love it. So all the angels and saints and the beautiful, and it's like the little cherubs opening the curtains to heaven. I mean, it really does feel that way. And all the curtains and the joy and in this blueness. It was just like this blue light that was really soft on the eyes, like a pastel -y kind of kind of blue, like like a baby blue. And it was in white, and it was just and it just calming. And I guess is the right word. And so beautiful and spiritual and loving. And that comes right from the church. I just love it. And that's what our Lord wants. Everything's filled with gold. Everything's perfect. Everything lasts forever. You don't have any more disease anymore. Your skin never falls off or gets gets zits and stuff. Or gets chapped in the cold or sunburned. Because it goes forever and it never dies. when Because you, your soul and your body unite in heaven eventually at the end. And it will become glorified. And a lot of people uh, don't want to accept this teaching or they don't meditate on it. But this is true, and this is real, and you want this, believe me, because we're just, we're going, otherwise we're just going in the ground, and, and any way you put it, you might as well go to heaven and not choose the other way. But it is totally the way of the cross. So I saw my suffering pressed and crushed, used by God, and turning into graces, flowers, roses, mysterious waterfall with angels up and down. Very steep, clear and fresh, beautiful little finger-like waves cascading down it. I saw fish in the host. How wonderful. Yeah, I saw the fish. Our Lord loves the fish. And it's very mysterious to me because I'm not a big fish eater and I don't really get it. I don't really understand the whole, the fish imagery, imagery so much. But he loves it and he likes using that image very, very much. And he gives many special properties to fish such as they call it brain food, the fish oil. And it's good for you if it's not flooded with mercury, right? Or poison like they do. So make sure to bless your food. Put some exorcism salt on your food every single time before you eat it. I know uh, Carol Leary was saying, for people who definitely need conversions, you want to take that exorcism salt and put it on their food every day. Really important to get keep them with the faith because God can help them, but we have to do the work. We're the, we're the little busy bees we're the little ants we got to do the work every day that's why our lord probably puts these people in my life that have to be keep getting reconverted over and over and over and over and over again because he wants us to keep reaching out he wants us he likes the repetition he likes the love he and that's what blessed mother's doing and what he's doing as well and he wants us to be an image of him so we feel like we're doing things over and over again for the Lord. And that's how it is in many ways. But <laughs> that's what you do when you have a job, right? You get up and you make donuts every day or what, what you, whatever you're doing. So why is it hard to just get up and do the will of God every day? Well, because it's naturally against our, our sins. Simple, fallen, flesh-filled, flesh pleasure-filled nature that wants me, me, me. And it's not God. God makes such wonderful things. Yeah, he really does if we meditate on the wonder. Like the the stars, the sky, everything. I already said this. The holy face beard 
became the Ark of the Covenant of the Tabernacle. And it, and it grew into the luminous cross with the mysteries and the platform with the Bible and stuff. I love it. It's so wonderful. And his, his mouth, remember, he is the word. He speaks. We don't just read and we're not just silent. We actually speak it out of our mouth. Very, very, very important. That's why we have eyes. That's why we have ears and a mouth, right? When I was tired, I was laying, laying down. And I found that the the building I'm in is like the sacred two united hearts. So just the, the rooms in it. With the bed being the sixth chamber. The sixth chamber is where you have the most unity with God. And this is... Uh, so when you rest, when you go to bed at night, you're resting. You rest on the Lord. I'm resting on the Lord. And that's like the sixth chamber where we totally trust in him. And we rest like a child in his mother's arms. My soul rests in you. And I love that imagery. And I wrote a little diagram of how each room in the house kind of looks like a ventricle or a, a, part, a chamber of the heart itself. And I really visualized it. And I saw how... The one chamber in the bedroom and then the little bed is like you're going deeper and deeper into the chambers of the heart. Oh, I love it. And I also saw that in the church. Remember, the church is like a heart. It's big, but it has different rooms, right? Uh, different chapels. I'm not talking about party rooms. I'm talking about in the church, the chapels and this, the sacristy and everything. The different chambers of the heart. And I saw the Blessed Sacrament Chapel as the sixth chamber. Oh, I love it. Also, the tabernacle in the church could also be considered the sixth chamber. We go into the sixth chamber. We walk in. God, I saw there was a car with a big X through it. He doesn't want me driving. He doesn't want me running around. He wants me here. He wants me, but he wants me out. He wants me walking the faith. Because remember, we walk through the wounds of Jesus. And it's a great mystery that we can't always, un how are we ever really going to understand the cross or why this or why that? How are we really going to understand the why? Well, if it's the will of God, praise be the Lord, thy will be done, right? I saw the continental shelf on the holy face splitting in three main places on the holy face. The eyebrows, the scripture book, and the cheekbones. Cheekbones. That's like the the heart of the face, so, so to speak. You know, the cheekbones are the solid part splitting apart. Uh, all sorts, meaning all sorts of earthquakes, definitely. But worldly disasters, trouble. But not just that, there's other trouble like disease, famine. I saw the four horses of the apocalypse in that. Like I saw, remember the cheekbones are like kind of like a strong part of the face or bones, right? So they're separating like the like the continental shelf like the world it, the holy face represents the world right it's round like the world and the ball of chastisement this is hitting and is splitting apart and i also already said the compass on blessed mother's knee and our lady of guadalupe it's like my knee too because i was wearing my ski pants because it got cold out and i was reflecting on how our blessed mother's has that on her knee and it reflects there's no time left war is imminent i saw our blessed mother's heart in our lady of guadalupe banner it was like a string to someone in the house is it's trying to pull them to him working on their soul especially during the rosary especially kneeling down and seeing the rosary even if it's not completely heartfelt our mother is going to work as much as she can with that through the string of grace pulling that soul to her beautiful i love it oh i can sustain you as a church within a church the church of atonement only our lord can sustain this we certainly can't only our lord can sustain the church within a church the church of atonement because it's against reason right <laughs> so and it says that in the catechism of the church a lot of the teachings it's not reason first and teaching second. It's the law first, and with the law comes right reason. Reason doesn't become become the God, you know, because human reasoning is, is fallible so much. We have to reason after, only after we study and learn the law. 
And that's a great lesson for me. Because we grow up in this culture where it's it's your truth and my truth, but it's not. It's the truth, and then through the truth we come to rational thinking, just like kind of St. Thomas Aquinas way of doing it, right? And all those scholarly men like Robert Bellarmine and stuff, although they did make some mistakes, you can read about that. Um, like Blessed Mother, during her life on earth, did churches in eclipse, uncertainty, persecution, betrayal, etc. So get on your hands and knees and pray. May God truly bless you today, now, and always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.